Okay, let's take a look at this interactive where we're going to be doing a virtual friction lab. The website is thephysicsaviary.com. This is an HTML5 animation, which means it will run on mobile devices. Let's go in. First thing I want to do is click on where it says types of surfaces, and we can toggle through the different materials that are interacting. I'm going to start with wood on lab table, which is essentially a wooden block that we're going to be dragging along. This is the force sensor. This is the uh, arrows that I can toggle the masses, so I'm going to bring it all the way down to 100 grams and click start. And we'll notice that this number is increasing. The block will start to move at some point, and when it's being pulled, it's actually being pulled in uniform motion, which means that the force applied by the string should be equal to the friction in the opposite direction. Now, if we scroll down, it generated a graph. This Diagonal line represents the increasing force until we overcome static friction. So the static friction is actually at this peak right here, which we can read off the graph, and it looks like it's around 0.8 newtons. Once the static friction is overcome, the amount of force required to drag the block drops off, and this more or less straight line, horizontal line, represents the kinetic friction, which if we follow it over, looks like it's in the neighborhood of about 0.5, maybe 5.5. So what we want to do is we're going to save the image and we'll make sure that when we save it, we call it wood on lab table 100 grams to keep track of it. Now I'm going to go back up. I'm going to click reset. I want to now toggle to rubber on ice and click start. And again, we'll notice that the force sensor is increasing. The block will start to move. Again, it's moving in uniform motion. If we go down, we'll notice that it's a similar shape graph. Here's our diagonal line, then there's the peak and the drop off to the horizontal. So as the force is increasing, we'll eventually overcome the static friction. And the static friction in this case looks like it's somewhere around 0.1 Newtons. And the horizontal line represents our kinetic friction. And we will also save this and we will call it 100 grams rubber on ice. If we click reset, we can go and change. And this is aluminum on steel. Again, this is still for the 100 grams. And we click start. And the force increases until we can move it in uniform motion. The shape of the graph is always going to be the same. Diagonal line, there's a peak. The peak represents the static friction that we've overcome. In this case, it looks like the static friction is around 0.34. Then it drops off to the kinetic friction, which in this case looks like it's around 0.25. And again, we save this and we will call it 100 grams aluminum on steel. So the next part of the lab is going to be doing the wood on tabletop again, but instead of being 100 grams, I want to change the mass. So I'm going to make it in the neighborhood of 700 to 800 grams. Now the only problem with this interactive is that sometimes when you're going up and down with the arrows, they will not give you the same mass again. So I'm going to go with 754, wood on lab table. I'm going to click start. And we watch the force sensor. And again, it will go until we overcome static friction and the block moves in uniform motion. I slide down. The shape is exactly the same as we've had in the past. Diagonal line, peak. This is your static friction. Drop off to kinetic friction. I'm now going to save this one and we're going to make sure that we name it properly, which is wood on tabletop, 754 grams. Let's now go with rubber on ice and click start. Scroll down. Here's our graph. Save as 754 grams rubber on ice. And our last one is going to be aluminum on steel. And here's our last graph. Let's save it as 754 grams aluminum on steel. Okay, so what I've done now is just gone into a Google Doc and created an area to put all my observations. So I've got each of my graphs that we've generated labeled 100 grams wood on lab desk. And essentially what we're gonna do is simply try to find the peak of this diagonal line. And it looks like it's somewhere in the neighborhood of about 0.8. Now there is a dot that's above it. It looks like most of them are just slightly below it. So I'm going to go with 0.79. Now I have a table at the bottom here, and I'm going to say my FFS 
is 0 0.79. So that's the value that we're going to take from the peak of that first graph. And we'll notice that if we wanted to figure out line of best fit for these horizontal lines, this is 0 0.5, that's 0 0.6, so it's somewhere around 0 0.55. Let's take a look at, let's take a look at the rubber on ice. So the peak for this one is just under 0 0.1, 0 0.09. So 0 0.09, maybe a 5, 0 0.095. And for my horizontal line, it looks like, so maybe it's around 0 0.75, so 0 0.075. And again, these are all in Newtons. So these are the forces. Okay, now to move on to the free body diagrams and the calculation for the coefficients of friction. Uh, I've got my diagram labeled 100 gram wooden block on desk. This is when it just starts to move. Now what I'm going to do is add in the forces. So there was an applied force of 0.79 newtons. If you're pulling with 0.79 newtons and the block just starts to move, our frictional force was also 0.79. Now we're going to put in gravity and the normal. Gravity is mass times g, which is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, giving us a value of 0.98 newtons. And because this is sitting on a level tabletop with no acceleration up or down, we know the normal force is also 0.98 newtons. So here's the pull. There's the frictional force static in the opposite direction until it just starts to move. Gravity 0.98 and the normal, which is also 0.98. Okay, when we go to calculate mu static, it's static friction force divided by normal, which we can get right off of our free body diagram. So we have a static friction force of 0.79 newtons. The normal force was 0.98, which gives us 0.80612. And because we had newtons over newtons, the units cancel off. Okay, but since our experiment only gave us two significant digits, we will have to round this final answer to two significant digits, which would give us a mu static of 0.81. Let's take a look at when the block is being pulled and moving in uniform motion. The pull from the right was 0.55 newtons. That also means that our frictional force was 0.55 newtons. And we also know that gravity is 0.98 newtons, and so is our normal force. So when we go to calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction, it is the kinetic friction force divided by the normal. We can get those values off of our free body diagram. So our kinetic friction was 0.55 newtons. Our gravitational pull downwards, or Fg, is 0.98. So we get 0.5612. If we round it to two significant digits, that gives us 0.56. Now that we've done those calculations, we can go back to our lab write-up and start putting in the information. So mu static for the wood table, 100 grams, was 0.81, and the kinetic was 0.56. So the idea is that you continue to go through those calculations with your free body diagrams. You can use the forces that were given and the masses that were given, and you fill in the chart, and then you start to look for patterns. And we should notice patterns between similar materials in terms of their coefficients of friction, since the coefficient of friction does not depend on mass, it depends on the materials that are in contact.